Here it's Buses, your local bus company serving your football team. Buses run every 10 minutes. Avoid the traffic. Don't get stuck in the delay. Get Ipswich Buses today. A single from only £1.20, a return from only £2. Find out more information at www.ipswichbuses.co.uk. Ipswich Buses, proud to partner with Talk in Town. <laughs> Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to your Sunday flagship podcast from Talking Town. I'm, of course, your host, the Gov, and I can see the live chat is already getting so busy. I love to see a live chat on a Sunday. It means that you're you're here, you're present, and you're wanting to speak about your football club. Now, do forgive us today, my friends, because it may be a different format, uh, style, or even length to how you're used to, because obviously we have got a legend, a legend with us this evening at 9pm, uh, a, a certain goalkeeper, Craig Forrest, ex-town, of course, Chelsea, West Ham, Canada International, uh, a pundit on ESPN, I do believe, currently. So uh, do forgive us, because it is a content frenzy at the moment with James Norwood midweek, Doncaster Tuesday. So we'll try and do the best we can, but do forgive us if this week isn't up to uh, the, the normal. Uh just like yesterday, with our technical issues on the post-game fans react show, with 12 minutes of Colin, the Cruncher, and Ben, uh, and try and find if you can see where Ben says great on that. I I can't find it, Ben can't find it, but Colin definitely heard it. So uh, that's a little 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 trick, little, little game for you. Uh, but 12 minutes, so it shouldn't take you too long. Uh, we've got, as I say, a really busy chat. Stephen Parry, uh, YouTube members are already in the chat. We have got Stephen Parry saying, better winning when we are not getting three, are not great. Three points is the main objective. And the legend is Matt Stannard, who gave me the best cake brownie I think I've ever had. I've had a Freddo on top. I saved half of it, brought it home, and it's gone missing. So I think the wife has eaten it. But I can tell you the bit I had was thoroughly Thoroughly enjoyable. I salute you, Mr. Stanard. Right, before we get our guest, well, not guests, they're not guests, are they? They're part of the furniture. Our contributors into the room. Let's have a quick look at the league table. Let's familiarise ourselves with the goings-on of yesterday. So we are currently sat in ninth position. For those that haven't dared look at a league table, 44 points. For me, we're chasing Oxford on 30 because they have the exact same number of games as we do. They're on 53, so nine points. But... You know, MK Dons a week, uh, six days from now. If we manage to beat Doncaster and the Dons lose midweek to Fleetwood, that could set up a tasty little visit to Stadium MK. Uh, and a win there could leave us within two points. So it, never give up hope, as the GOAT would say. But yesterday's 1-0 win was bowling shoe ugly. Uh, I'm not going to do the intro, so I'm going to get straight into it, because obviously time is a, is, is a pressing. We have got... Um, I'm not going to swear at 13.33. He's going to... He, beep, that was ugly. Not beep as in uh, Stephen. And I've got Matt Phillips to join me to look at the bowling shoe ugly game from yesterday. But as Parry says, Steve, uh, Rich, I'll start with you. A win is a win. Yeah, that is what we're in it for. You know, on a, on a Sunday morning when we all wake up, we're all happy when we win, aren't we, Martin? Well, the majority. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I don't know if really. Matt down down there he's uh, he's a bit grumpy isn't he because I know he's going to have a bit of a rant. But it's all about the it is all about really? the three points, and you can't always play fantastic football. I did tell everybody on Friday night when there was four nils, five nils, six nils in the chat, it wasn't going to be easy against Chillingham yesterday. Neil I'll be Harris all week. <laughs> yeah, Neil Harris came and he had them set up well, a good game plan. But Martin said as well, you know. This is Ipswich Town. We've seen it over the years. You know, these teams come to Portman Road. We think we're going to absolutely steamroll them. We huff and we puff. We just about blew the house down, but only just. just. But only because of an, ind an individual piece of quality, uh, Matt, from Connor Chaplin. Touch, hit, on target, goal. Beautiful. What, friend of the show? <laughs> friend of the show, Connor Chaplin, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a great hit, wasn't it? I was kind of resigned to the fact it was going to be nil-nil because it had been... 
pretty dismal for 75 minutes, didn't he? Until he mm. and, it, and we got lucky with that because I think Edmondson plays the ball to the edge of the box. It blew up, didn't it? Hit him on the head. And he volleys, he volleys in the rebound. It was a great finish. And it was brilliant to see uh, everyone celebrating. But it was it was really hard work. I mean, the first half was dismal, wasn't it? I, it really, it was almost like we had gone back to Paul Lambert days again. Where was like the... See, now this is interesting to me. In the McKenna interview at the end, he said we'd worked on the premise, like Rich was saying now, and you. They'd worked on the premise that it was going to be a really hard game. And I wonder if that just overtook a little bit in their thinking. Because... Gone was this kind of McKenna ball football that we've been talking about, that, you know, one, two, two touches most, you know, beating the press and getting forward quickly. It was, it, we were going backwards. And this is one of my issues with Carroll. He passes backwards so much. Walton was hesitant on how he would distribute the ball. Is he going there? Is he going to go there? He was slow. Go back there again. It just went back to the days of sort of that, where Cook was struggling and, and Lambert was quite happy to stat pad, as you call it, mine. And, um, you know, I just, it was it was it was a dismal performance, quite frankly, the first half. Uh, I Owen, mean, why are bowling shoes classed as ugly? It seems unfair on the poor things. Have you seen bowling shoes? <laughs> bowling shoes aren't pretty. Yeah, the jam Since used to COVID, bowling. I went bowling after Christmas, so you don't get bowling shoes now. Do you remember when Do they used not? to squirt? Used to take yeah. them back and they'd squirt a little bit of anti back in and then stick them on the shelf, wouldn't they? Oh, lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The jam used to go on stage wearing them um, bowling shoes. And it's a quote from good old JR for those that are wrestling fans among us. You will know that he bowling shoe ugly. That's tough. Interesting, Matt days. said there about Tom Carroll. Now he was shit. We're, we're probably going to come on to him and Lee Evans. They're way too similar, them two. We've not got like when Morsi plays, you've got someone, Matt, who can carry that ball forward. Yeah. Both of them just sit there, they <laughs> go sideways, they don't go forward. Look, Tom Carroll's played in the Premier League. I'm not going to say that he's a shit footballer, but he was shit yesterday. And Lee Evans wasn't a lot better than him. He might be a little bit better than him, but he wasn't a lot better than him. Too similar. Stem from the midfield. The strikers were starved the service. I know Gov said uh, Piggott had a good game. I thought Piggott, when he got the ball, the ball stuck to him. Piggott is probably our best all-round striker. You know, he can hold the ball up. He just needs games. He looked really, really rusty to me yesterday. He did. He did. And I hope you plays him again Tuesday. Yeah, I do. I can't see how you can single pig it out for criticism when across the board, it, you know, there was no creativity in midfield. Like you say, Carroll gets the ball, it goes backwards. At one point, I think Thompson passed the ball back to Walton inside Gillingham's half in the second half. He did in the second half. I, I don't mind that. That's, that's ball retention. Sometimes you've got to reload the gun to go again. That that that's you 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 learn that in training actually. Yeah, reload, just, reload, 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 yeah, reload. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get that. It was just so. Can I, can I just have? Can I just have? Colin, you said you've um you've bet on Liverpool to win both teams to score. How about you save that money? Oh, behave! behave. A YouTube member. There you go. <laughs> Although well, actually, actually, that's a good point to actually raise because tonight's show, Craig Forrest, 9 p.m. If you are a YouTube member or a Ko-Fi monthly supporter, so if you're on the boards or or your name's in green in the chat right now, uh, or you're watching this back, you can get a question to Mr. Forrest. The show, the show is live. We'll take questions from the chat, but your question will get priority. That's a perk for you, Rich. You keep telling me, what's my perks? There's there a go. bloody perk for you, yeah. son. I'm on the that show was, anyway, so what do I get? That was my idea, I think. What do oh, I get? Don't trip over yourselves about whose <laughs> <laughs> idea it was. Good God. Um, let's start we with Chris that Wright. Run, um, Crunch and Gov. Chris What's Wright that? is up at 6 30 in the morning in South Utah to watch this. Utah Saints. Remember that? Chris Wright Utah. is a hero. We love you, Chris. Utah Thank Saints. you ever so much. Let's 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 hone in on on, on Pigger. Uh, because obviously yeah. it was a big feature at the post-game show yesterday. I still can't find where Ben says great, but we'll let you work that one out in, in when you watch it. I felt he played really well. I felt his role yesterday was one of those thank thankless roles where he's got to play centrally against yeah. four, five, six players. And every time the ball comes near you, you've got to fight and hold off those two, three, four, five players, make it stick and bring the rest of your team. He rarely lost that ball yesterday, Matt. That was his role. That was his job. Yeah, I was surprised people like giving him a bit of grief. I thought he did... OK, arguably could have scored, didn't he? He had that kind of half chance on the header. I don't know how near that was to the goal, but um, it was a little chance. Should there. have scored. Should have scored. Got under it. Got under yeah. it. Okay. But uh, yeah, I thought he held the ball up. I thought he held the ball up nicely, actually. Um, but you, look, when you when the striker's holding the ball up, right, you're expecting the midfielders then to come and support you. And he just wasn't really, like you say, Evans and Carroll were so similar. Oh, Although, 
looking on the heat map, Carol was a little bit further forward than what Evans was. But when, like I say, when Carol gets the ball, he goes backwards again. I don't think the issue was their heat maps, Rich. I think the issue is that I've seen tortoises in Vikings, Petrop and Ipswich that have got more speed about them it, than them. Was two. it the asthmatic snail returned? Oh, Christ alive, mate. I think I, I think I saw, you know, more more pace. I'm not, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going to take that analogy. I don't know where I'm no going with it. Have they, Martin, in that centre of that pitch? There's no pace, when Rich. Got, when you've not got Sam Morsey, and that is probably an area where in yeah. the summer we need to address that because... Morsi plays a bit on the edge. You see, like, look, he got the red card against Akron, and I think he's already got six bookings this season. That's how he plays with an edge, and we like that. But he's probably always going to pick up the odd suspension here and there, and you do need someone, when he's not available, who can come in and give us that. Because at the minute, we've got back in soon El Mazzuni, uh, Harper's gone out alone. They're all too similar, aren't they? There's no one who can drive like Sam Morsi. Take the game by the scruff of the neck. Yeah. And we really, really missed that. And I know he's got he's got one more game to miss at Doncaster. And then he'll obviously, well, he'll be straight back in the team, hopefully, at, next Saturday at Stadium MK, Matt, won't he? I'd have thought so. Yeah, we need him for that game. I mean, he went <laughs> Burns for that game. So he, it sounded like McKenna said he wasn't too, it was just a bit of a heavy knock he got to come off yesterday. But you thought he was his hammy, yeah. didn't you, Richard? But... Yeah, I thought the way he was holding his leg. But mm. McKenna's probably, He's only just had a little word with a physio, so they'll probably find out more. I'd have thought on Monday, Matt. You yeah. probably you're probably in today yeah. having a look at him, and then um, we'll yeah. find out more. Interesting, you say that about the you know in the summer midfield options for the summer because I feel like Carol. I think Carol's on a year deal. I would not be surprised if he gets another deal because yeah. he's got history there with McKenna going back to Spurs. There's got to be a reason why he keeps putting him in. There's not got, that many got, options to be fair, is there at the moment? That's the issue. True. I mean, will he still get a look in once? Um, Morsey comes back, or would he go with Morsey and Carroll? I don't know. He'll go with Morsey and Evans, I would have thought, because yeah, I think the, the biggest thing he did when he arrived was that switch between Evans and Morsey, allowing yeah. Morsey to go and be the, the energetic driver and Evans to be the protector he was at Wigan. I think Backinson yeah. could play that. Yesterday, I, I was quite impressed when he came on. He looked he looked a rangy, athletic-type midfielder. I'd like to see him get on the ball a little bit more. Owen mm. asked, do we do you ask the questions beforehand or during the show? We ask it during the show, Owen. We, we put nothing to the guests before they arrive. It's all... Even James Norwood got nothing before he arrived. Um, it was all, it's all he had plenty on us. <laughs> he's he fucking yeah, you got your head start, didn't he? Not used to. <laughs> uh, George says Wolf around the match. Yes, he was. We'll probably get to Wolfie at some point. Pickett hasn't had a chance, says Owen, and God knows how long. Can't expect the world straight away. He had more about than the Norwood for me. Also, sooner Morsey well, is well, back. If you, saw the, if you saw the pre match show yesterday, everybody, and we had Matt from Jules in the Blood on, um, <laughs> he thought. Piggott would have been one of the top scorers of the division, having scored, what was it, 20 odd goals at Wimbledon with no service and yeah, a fox yeah. in the box and could play the channels and all that kind of thing. So we've, we've really not seen the best of him. But I hope no. they go down, you know. I can't fucking stand Gillingham. We've all got those football clubs outside of Norwich that for some reason you just don't like. It can be that uh, it was a manager at some point or a style of play or an incident. Or in my yeah. case, it's that it's, it's that stand with no roof. I do not ever want to face the prospect of having to go, go, there. go away anyway. So you ain't going to get fucking oh, I'm wet. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Never, ever. You're ever even going, going to MK. There's seven, 7,000 of us and you ain't coming. No. 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 You're fucking high horse giving it like shit teams. I've been home and away. I've done, <laughs> my, I've done my service. I've done my oh, service over the way. I've I've done my service. I've no, done my no. service. I've been at Coventry when Kevin Lisby's missing open goals. I've done Kevin my Lisby. service. I had Lisby eleven gov on my shirt when he signed. Oh, I thought he'd be the missing piece. Really? Of a, yeah, yeah, on the red one. He was crap. Him. I used to call him the goal machine just to be something. Well, here he comes. The goal machine's coming on. He's useless. Yes. See, West Ham, Sarah, hey, that, that, that doesn't like West Ham. Watford for Nick Miller. See, I, Watford used to be a little peep, but now my father in law supports them. I, I've softened. I've softened. And I like the way they run their, run their oh, club. But Gillingham, for some reason, I just think, oh, bleh, no, not for me. We've all got a club. You, you two must have one in world football. You just, just don't. I've got one coming up in the you, game. <laughs> have you? Well, there you go. There you go. Leeds <laughs> says Leighton Durant. You see, we've all got them. It's, it's not about us being snobbery. It's about, I just. Yeah, I don't well, know. Love Bielsa. Love Bielsa, legend. Yeah, you see. I don't mind Sheffield United for a long time, would, though. Well, I would say were... is actually a good uh, example of where we are, actually, in, in the Football League tier, because there's a team that's only on the other side of the Dartford Tunnel, yet they don't even bring 500 <laughs> to, to Portman Road. You know what I mean? So that does show you, like, 
where we are at the moment. We've all yeah, got we to and we only just beat them. And we only, and we only just beat them, yeah. Matt Stannard, Wickham. Yeah. I don't think I said they shouldn't exist. I said if they didn't exist, if they didn't, I didn't say I would. I didn't want them to exist. There's a difference there, Parry. Don't get my uh, words mixed up. And they've played. And shout out, Julian. They've played at New Wembley. Guess who hasn't? Oh, you, 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 you rattle on about that more times than you, you ever need to. Why? Yeah, Why? But you want to see it? Switch at New Wembley. Was it New Wembley now? Is it? Been out there fifteen years. No, it's old old Wembley. <laughs> <laughs> um, Morse doesn't like Akron Stanley, so he called him non league. You see, we've all got them, people. Moving back to the game yesterday, James Norwood. I was willing you, Crunch, to shout something at Norwood because he was playing terrible, and I thought he needs <laughs> Cruncher to get back on his back. Yeah. They've, they've made friends, and suddenly Norwood's performance has dropped. I don't think the system helped him yesterday. He was left sided, wasn't he? Out there, I didn't. Callie. <laughs> I don't want Aki to exist. No, Kelly, we know how you feel about Aki. Yeah, Danny's going there again. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I thought the system didn't help Norwood. I thought he put in a shift, second half. He was absolutely out on his feet there at the end. He, he closed someone down and then he was he was down yeah. cramping up. I, I can't yeah. remember. When was the last time he played a full, well, yeah. 98 minutes it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's a long, long time. It is mm. a while. It is a long while, yeah. Uh, but he was poor. I, I, you say the position yesterday didn't help him. Inside left, I felt he was playing more. Didn't than know he was on the pitch first half because he hardly touched the ball. No, I know he didn't. No, he didn't. Again, it was that lack of creativity though. We had across the park and it was too slow, and we, we just didn't. I was really disappointed we didn't see that one and two touch football yesterday. I just feel like McKenna's mindset was this is going to be an ugly game, and he, I don't know, he wanted to slow it down. I don't know. Tactically, it was the wrong game, Matt. You can't you can't have two touch football when you've got two banks of four. Not a single player in our own. You've got to do what we did yesterday. I think it was You're patient stuff. You've got to be patient. Yes, that's the tempo. thing. We don't transition quick enough. Leighton Durant, new member. Leighton, we love you. We love you, you very much. <laughs> he can. The thing is, though, the thing is, though, Matt and Rich probably can tell you this a bit more having been a coach, etc., or someone like Mike Brown. When you've got that tactic you're facing, where you've got no gaps, they're, they're you know they're the old Arsenal on a rope. Two banks of four. You've got to be patient, but you've equally got to have a chart time when you have worked it. Suddenly, you've got to go through the gears very quickly, and we didn't do that yesterday. Interesting, that Jason you. Clayton saying there. Did they park the bus? I didn't think they parked the bus. If you look at that second half, mm. Matt, if you if you were a neutral, I said to the guy sitting behind me, you would never know that they're in the bottom four, and we were going for the playoffs because they were playing like the home team. That started yeah. the first 15, 20 minutes. They hit the post twice. You know, look, big shout out to, I think it was Danny Lloyd who got injured over the far side. Quite a bad injury. I think he got stretched off. So, hopefully yeah. he gets a, a speedy recovery. But I, I yeah. thought, yeah. That was as a an away team, that they didn't come and park the bus. They come and had a go because they know, really, when we spoke to Matt, I think they've got Cambridge coming up and then Morecambe. Yeah. Yeah. That was a free hit for them yesterday. Yeah. You know, they're not going to be judged and stay up on games against town. And if they'd have nicked anything yesterday, that would have been probably points gained. And really, Matt, looking at that, at the full-time whistle, mm. I thought we were lucky. We'd have been lucky to get a point out of that game. We won. We won. Look, fair play. I'm happy we won the game. But on the balance of play, I thought Gillingham second half were by far the better side. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, I, at half-time, I was chatting to everyone around us. I was like, they said, what do you think then? And I was like, it's a team that's looking to escape relegation against a side that looked like they'd given up on the top six. Is how it felt to me, certainly at half-time. It was frustrating. But, yeah, I get that. I get that point over, you know, playing one and two touch football. But then I suppose you've got to try and stretch the teams then, haven't you? Go from side to side. And that's where we were missing that creativity, I guess. All due respect, Lee Evans, Tom Carroll, James Norwood, Joe Piggott, they ain't going to stretch nobody with any athletic yeah. ability or pace. I mean, athletic ability, maybe not pace, not pace. Um, Wes Burns, obviously, was our only real pace. He yeah. went off injury. We don't think it's anything serious that McKenna said. Nothing major in his post-game uh, presser. A few comments coming in we'll, we'll, we'll come to. First of all, George is saying any uh, thoughts on if he's linked to card captain Sean Morrison. I thought he was out for the season last time I checked. In fact, 5th of February 2022. Yes, yesterday. Sean Morrison injured for the rest of the season. And Alfie Doherty's missed two months. So, Colin, by the way, rubbish, Norwich are in the Premier League and they're still in the FA Cup. And we're ninth in League One. Colin's a funny one because yesterday when when um, Ben and Josh and that like, were singing to the Norwich fan about you know getting bad, he got really up, irate. Why was there three Norwich fans there anyway? Well, they, they come to see the, the home of English football, mate. They come to see the greatness. Where was, this? Where was three Norwich fans? 
Uh, by, the by, by the yeah, by we're after by us, but after the game for about five minutes until oh, they, yeah. they they just they moved themselves. They ran when they saw me coming. Nobody <laughs> runs when they see you coming. In fact, nobody can see you coming. That's the issue. <laughs> you just suddenly appear. Even pre-game, I was looking, looking, and suddenly just out of nowhere. There he is. Um, there. Yeah. Lewis, YouTube member Lewis. As luckless as we were, credit should be given to Neil Harris, given Gills a clear identity already, oh, not yeah. always just about us. Yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree with that. And manager uh, links Matt, was very heavily. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they should have took the lead, hit the post, uh, off the yeah. line. He's good with, that for Dane Oliver. I like him. He got in two goals and they beat us, what, 3-1, was it? Um, yeah, I'll take him. Good player. Player. Like, there's players out there. There's players out there who would improve us. He'd be one yeah. who'd improve our front line, I think. He's only 30. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. Graphics geezer. Selena played up top of the last 30 minutes against Bolton. We were playing so well. Then didn't know when McKenna hasn't started it like that. Uh, Matt says, Crunch it, love, Colin. He helped my Archie got an Alex Griffin show. Made his day. Uh, top work. Top work. Um, Alex is like YouTube's version of Justin Fletcher. He right. was his yesterday, if anyone He was. He was. Two weeks uh, running, he's done. What's your thoughts? Protesters. Then the protesters rocked up. See, it's <laughs> someone walking around just as a traffic cone. And protesters. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm all for body autonomy. Uh, George Hug, what's your thoughts? That's a big word for me, that one. Um, what's your thoughts on Jackson? Would you keep him in the summer? Yes, Caden Jackson for town captain. You've heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> that's what, I, what? What's all that? You've been drinking. I'm a big fan of Caden Jack. I think he's a good player. Yesterday, I, would, I, I, would, I felt the game could have done with someone like Caden to stretch it a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Bit yeah, up top. That, Although, yeah, yeah. my nan told me Bon and Jackson had a had a race before the game and, and Bon won. Whether that was a full pelt or heart into it race, I don't know. But maybe yeah. Bon's faster than Jackson. You wouldn't have beat the ref. Did you see the ref warming up oh, yesterday? Oh, what a great stride. <laughs> And then that sprint in the second half. Did you see oh, that? Go? Awesome. He in the penalty area to the centre circle. He's like Usain Bolt. He loved himself, didn't he, that ref? Yes, I thought, yeah. you fucking prick. That's how you know a game is bad, though. When the biggest not. cheer of the afternoon Get out. for the ref racing Jesus. 100 metres like he's Usain Bolt. It was, uh, it was it quite was, funny. Yeah. You know? Um the ref was a unit, says Ipswich Jules. We love you, Ipswich Jules. Lewis Robertson. I was all for Simpson coming back, but not to prevent the 23s. In hindsight, Fuji of State. Well, that's that's a contractual issue, though, isn't it, Lewis? We believe. So yeah. that will rumble. Six until... to play there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Then you got Tony B saying ref was actually. I thought ref was a failure, right, this time. Yeah, you I, know. Well. I don't mind refs when they're shit in equal measure, like for both teams. They, they, they miss. Yeah, sure I don't mind that. Ref had a nice spray turn. Gov, what? Dominic Thompson. Let's come to him then. How, how did we see Gov. Um, Gov Thompson. How do we see Dominic Thompson? Yeah, it was mixed bag for me. I was talking to uh, someone and his missus at the, the statue yesterday and they didn't really rate Thompson. I thought he did. I thought he did all right, actually. Um, but home debut. M McKenna thought he did okay. I, did, I don't feel like he put any, he didn't really put a foot wrong, quite frankly. I mean, all right, glowing, glowing, glowing there, Matt. Steady on on the whole praise issue there. Um, you know, he did that, okay. He did I was okay. the man of the match yesterday, quite frankly. I mean, no one stood out, did they? He did okay. The defense did you see, have you seen the EFL team of the weekend? So we've got no. George Edmondson in and we've got Connor Chaplin. Where's Luke Wolfen? He was hard done by, he was the best of our center backs yesterday. I thought. If you've not heard, Matt, you want to listen to um the post match on Suffolk with Mick Mills and. He, he, put, he says an interesting thing about George Edmondson. Now, when we've done our January re review, Gov, I said he's been a bit off. He's been a bit off since we've been playing three at the back. Mick Mills says he plays well in a two. He likened him to Christoph Berry. You know, he heads it, kicks it, gets stuck in. Yeah. But when he's got time on the ball, I know he made the assist for the goal yesterday. But he's playing on that left-hand side and he's right-footed, isn't he? So he's always got to come in. And he looks a little bit sort yeah. of... I don't know. Just a I little bit form, off it. Yeah. He gave the ball away. Uh, he did do a great tackle second half there, but yeah. he made up because he yeah. made a woeful pass and it was a great yeah. block. But yeah. I thought he wasn't at his best again yesterday. I don't know what these people watch when they have teams of the weekend because Chaplin wouldn't it's have made stats, it. Anyway, it's all no stats, isn't it? It was all stats, though, isn't it? It's all stats, though, isn't it? You know, it's like yeah. pass completed, tackles made, aerial duels won. Some of it's bollocks. Like expected goals. Total There's bollocks. no doubt Total Edmondson goals. has like cost us a couple of games, isn't he? The Bolton back pass. He was. What did you call him last week? 
he thought it was Maldini at Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. Lost the ball, ball goes in. But yeah, he did. He did get the assist yesterday. Um, you know, he's be, he's being asked to play that on that left side of the three. I think personally think he's all right on that position. It's only recently that you've seen some errors creep in. Everyone was kind of waxing lyrical before then. I th- I th- he got a knock in the first half in front of me. I don't know if that affected the rest of the ninety or not, but he got a knock and he was bit sh- clearly shouting and sh- you know sort of swearing at himself. You know, yeah. um, I don't know how that played up the rest of the game. But what I would say is we're sort of tactically, and that's a conversation going on in the chat between people. We're tactically flexible. Like when we've got the ball, we want to get our centre half, such as Janoy and Edmondson over the halfway line to join in. We push up the full back. When we haven't, it's clearly, from my perspective, a 4-2-3-1, if you like. Out of possession, we quickly retreat into a four. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a transitional play from that can be a little bit tricky for a centre-half to get from a four to a back to a three and an out. I just wonder if he's struggling with that. I don't know. I mean, do you know on the other side, though, Rich, to be fair... I feel he's not his purple patch is clearly gone because he was near yeah. enough back to Genoa. We he all did saw Nick Lewis did like him. Like he said when Sheffield United played with the uh, overlapping centre backs. Now they were right out on the touchline. Yeah. But they look, it's a new system and they have to get used to it. But sometimes systems don't fit everybody. Uh look, Danassi and I thought he was solid again, Gov, yesterday, but he gets to about halfway inside the opposition half, then he gets a nosebleed, doesn't he? He does. He does. They really um, does, yeah. I'm so defensively, not... defensively, he's been good all season, and I, I was one on here who probably said I probably wouldn't keep him in the summer, and he's and he showed me that he can play in this league, and he's obviously earned his, his new contract, and he's he's done decently. Burgess is the interesting one, like Owen says there, you know, because he played in a three at Accrington, and he's he hasn't had any game time that's yet, not, so that's what I was going to say. Like, I'm surprised, I'm surprised we're not seeing that yet. Edmondson go to the right, Rich, and then Burgess on the left, and Wolfie in the middle. Not actually seen that'd, that. be harsh, that'd be harsh on JD, wouldn't it? Because he's played really well. What, what is Mike not liking about transition? It's a fucking... T- I thought you were a coach, Mike. I thought, <laughs> that's like page one of the, of the coaching manual, transition. Uh, all right, anyway. On Janoy, Matt, the issue with Janoy for me is, like Rich says, nosebleed. And yesterday, when Wes Burns was cut, or Carl Edwards was coming inside to make that mm. space for the overlapping centre half. He's got to go, isn't he? He's got to be quicker and go and, yeah, and be the yeah. be the winger. Um, we're we're strug- he's struggling with that aspect of his game at the moment, isn't he? Well, do you know it? Yeah, yeah. Well, his early thought he wasn't. Yeah, I mean, but we always did say, didn't we? He was probably the wrong defensively. He was solid, but getting forward at the end of the day, he is a centre half. I, I think <laughs> no one really knew what he was, but I think he was bought as a centre half. Mm. And you don't really want that kind of player crossing the ball into the box. So he does struggle with that, and I think you know. And if also, that's the way you want to be playing, Matt, then if you're not saying that, you have to get someone who fits. Because when you're playing that three, there's always someone who's going to be able to come out and make that extra attacker, haven't you, Martin? And then if if yeah. he doesn't fit that, you have to get someone who can play that role. Look, Denashian, um, someone just said they're in the chat, player of the season, and he's had a really good season. So really good season, let's not yeah. be too harsh on him because he's been really solid. But he's going forward. Going forward, if we want to progress as a team with this yeah. formation, you maybe have to look at other players. See, I don't buy into that whole sentiment thing. Well, I do because Bartos Belikowski well, is my the hero, last, but... He's the last one of the Hurst era now. Am I right in thinking that? Now, yes. Now, yes, he is. Yeah. He'd easily yeah. been brushed aside, couldn't he? He'd gone out alone twice. Jackson's hanging on. Oh, Caden, yeah, of course. Of yeah, course. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's still there. So, them, them two are the last two. And and Genoi's been out on loan twice. He could easily have just been, could easily just disappeared. I think in that Sunderland game, when we drew 1-1, it was quite noticeable that he wasn't crossing the ball in, was he? And it was Burns was doing, I think it was Burns, doing all the leg work for the, to, to get the ball into the box in that mm. game. It was quite noticeable. But, yeah, I don't, even though I feel Genoa is having a good season, I still don't want him to think like, you know, he's almost been cemented into that right-sided role, hasn't he? I mean, you don't want people to get into a comfort zone of thinking their position's always safe, which is why I'm thinking they could change it up for Edmondson that side. And as you rightly say, that's his strongest foot. And bring Burgess in on the, on the left. Oh, no, yeah, but then you're not going to get Burgess. You're going to have the same issue with, on the other side because Burgess, to me, doesn't scream mobile, underlapping, overlapping centre half. Like he, I think we've got a three central players Wolfenden, Danassian, and Burgess who plan the centre of the three. But I just wonder if a tactical tweak, Rich, could be Wolfie going to the right side, Danassian playing centrally because Wolfie is very comfortable on that ball. 
And he's played right back before. Where did he play wing back at Wolfenden? Was that Plymouth or what? Where did he play at Plymouth? Swint was. Mm, I can't remember. I don't know. I do not uh, know. But I think, uh, yeah, Palace, I think... like, Palace in the cup, he played at right back, didn't he? Yeah, but that's a young when player, you weren't yeah. it? Under, under, under Nick. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's probably out of the three, probably the most comfortable coming forward mm. with the ball. Edmondson, possibly Edmondson in the centre. I don't know because Edmondson, he'd be a shoe, shoe on in your team, wouldn't he, Edmondson? Definitely with the way he's played, but he's he yeah. looks that he's struggling with the role a little bit when he goes forward. Um, so, but then you look at seven games, we've kept four clean sheets. So, yeah, you've it's, got to, it's you've working got to, that way. Yeah, you've got to look at that on the on the positive side as well. So, yeah, what interesting about moving forward. Our play yesterday, when a goal up. How did you view that after that? Because for me, I felt we were too deep, and I was I was urging Wolfenden to get his line up. And that's a mentality thing in players, I feel, that it's, it's you've got this lead, let's sit back and let's defend it. But we were getting deeper and deeper <laughs> yeah. and deeper. And I just I hate it. Like I've seen it so many times on, on, on the town where you've got deeper and deeper and then you can see the, like, a last-minute equaliser. So that, certainly the mindset, well, you're absolutely right. The mindset was there, wasn't it? Because Norwood came right over to where I am in that corner trying to waste time on about 88 minutes. But you knew there was going to be, what, was it eight minutes only done? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, said, well, what, why are you doing that? We've still got 10 <laughs> yeah. minutes to go. That yeah. corner where yeah. we've got, like, why are we not committing to, to try and score a second? I want to go and score yeah, a second, kill the game. They were there yeah. to be killed. We just didn't, got the goal. And we immediately almost played with, well, we didn't play with, we did play with the handbrake on. Mm. It was, you know, and the line got deeper. You see the centre half there, maybe Rich with a bit more experience, a Mowbray type where you, he gets yeah, his yeah, boys up and he... Push him up the bit. Yeah. I don't want to be too critical though, because we have won five out of seven under McKenna and that puts us, yeah. I think we're yeah. third, that'd be third we in are. the table. And on... If we went that way for the rest of the season, you know, it's it's a good return. And it's it always going to be a hard art. He's, look, he's still learning yeah. about management, his players, you know. Do you, do you feel and, like his honeymoon period's over a little bit? Because we've not played well at Hillsborough, like the shot on target at Hillsborough. And we've scraped over the line yesterday. But if we get two scrappy 1-0 wins this week, Matt, at Doncaster and MK, yeah. we'd be sitting here next Sunday thinking, yeah, brilliant. Bloody Doncaster with my acker yesterday. 60 quid down the, the drain, winning 2 1 at Sunderland. Still not, not make Gov's fiver into 30 quid. No, that said, though, I did win a five on the national lottery last night. So. Did you? <laughs> I did, yeah. And, and a free lucky dip. <laughs> oh, well done. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, Mike Fishman, yes, Fritz, that's very true. But it's starting to look with like Lambert esque. We won. We did few... say, Mike, it'd take you about six games to moan about Kieran <laughs> seven and you'd offer it. I, I, I agree, Mike. I do agree, Mike. He did what well, I was at the top of the show. He did feel like that. But it goes back to tempo again, doesn't it? We kept saying in under Cook and Lambert, we looked lethargic and couldn't get the ball it's... forward quickly. And then McKenna came in and we're talking McKenna ball. And then suddenly, OK, so Gillingham set up well. But again, have we changed our mindset too much to accommodate a team that was in the relegation zone? We won the game of football. We're sitting... Well, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The form table. But if you look at the bigger... I mean, are you confident ahead of two big away games? Again, we're playing one of the worst teams in the division. And some, and then someone on the periphery will win. Oh, look, look, Mike's saying they're telling him that he's wrong. I think he's still. Look, we're judging Kieran McKenna after seven games. Like I just said, yeah. he's a new manager. Let's let's give him the rest of this season and next season, and see where we are. Then we're too. I think as football fans yeah. now, we are too critical and we jump on people like Joe Piggott. People saying, "Oh, Bond should be taken out of the team. Joe Piggott should be played." And now they're saying, "Oh, Piggott wasn't very good." Well. Yeah. Long's not been very good for the last fifteen games, and he scored one goal. So let's give players and managers just just a little bit more time, because yeah. I, I, we do we need to be... realise. I've said it time and time again. Mm. What division we're in? We aren't given a divine right by size of our stadium, size of our following at home. Twenty thousand yesterday for I think the fourth game on the trot. Seven thousand yeah. to MK. We're taking next week. That doesn't guarantee us anything. Well, you know? having, having a nine million pound wage bill that's six million more than everybody else don't guarantee you anything. Exactly. Either, right? So it's another three points. Hopefully, we go to Doncaster Tuesday. Look, they won yesterday. They're going to be on a high. Isn't they, the points the points trajectory something. for McKenna like ninety nine points or something or something? Ninety eight, like I see, Gov. Ninety eight. Right. Regardless, if it's ninety eight, ninety nine, hundred, ninety four, right. 
I don't know how anyone can be upset that we're, we're, we're winning games of football. It doesn't matter how you win them. I've seen us play tr- tremendously well and not win. <laughs> yeah. um, and I've seen us play absolutely like yesterday, bowling shoe ugly, but get over the line. But again, you say about the two the two games coming up, Matt. Mm. Doncaster, you don't want to overlook it, but that should be a win because, as you say, they're one of the poorest teams in the division. You've got to right. compete, though, as Rich will tell you. <laughs> But <laughs> measuring, the yeah, but measuring, but again, it's going to come back down to next Saturday, or it should do, where we have to measure ourselves against one of the informed teams in this division inside the playoffs. And do we fall short again, yeah. or do we actually cross the line? Because so far, we're beating the teams we should be beating. But Wednesday last week, another measuring stick, not a shot on target. No, That's no, not no. great. No. So, you know. Um, yeah, again, though, like, we absolutely swept Doncaster aside. Now we're all sitting there going, oh, shit, we've got to play Don, eh? Hang on. It's more MK Dons, I'm thinking. Huh? I'm, I'm already thinking we've got three balls in the bank, which is wrong, I know. I know. But it's hard not to overlook a team that you've you've, you've smashed at home and have been in the bottom four all season. I mean, that's the same same logic for Gillingham, though, wasn't it? We went there, yeah. absolutely. I mean, that first, that first half was our greatest first half performance of the season. Probably yesterday mm. was one of our worst, but... Against the same opposition, so it just goes to show you no know, two games is the same. And you know, top cam, you know, bo- bottom as we saw yesterday, Doncaster, it will be against the manager of Sunderland, beaten 2 1. I think it's, it's, that, be- it's that hope that kills you when we're looking at them scores. We're coming out <laughs> the ground and Oxford, Matt, are losing 2 1. We're thinking, yeah, down to six points, then yeah. they go and score two late goals. And yeah, this is why we're, we're, we're just yeah. hanging on by our fingernails at the minute. The big, the big thing is, isn't it? We, we, we all season we've not put a run together. This is the issue. You know, we had the bad start. We keep mentioning this over and over. But we don't put three games back to back together. I mean, c- can we possibly do that? The win yesterday or win on Tuesday then, and then make a statement at MK Dons. Can we do that? Then, it has to. then we're in with a, then, then we're in with a bit of a shout. We have to do it. We, we have do to that. do that, don't we, mind? We've got to go to over. Well, just, just, just get three yeah. points. I'm not worried about turning teams over. It's about yeah. it's because you're building Big Mo at the moment. That's the thing. You're building Big Mo. And now you've got another win under your belt. Other teams got to look at you, you know, with a bit more caution. You know, Dolly won't be looking forward to seeing Town Rock up on Tuesday. You beat them. MK Dons won't be looking forward to Town Rocking up on Saturday. You're building Big Mo. And as you head into the business end of the season, that's what you've yeah. got to do. However you need to do it, you need to do it. And we're doing it. Not in a convincing way against Gillingham, but when have you seen Town in the last 20 years face a bottom side at Portman Road and convincingly do the business? Well, other than Doncaster. <laughs> the six other than Doncaster, who were in absolute disarray. But okay, Doncaster once in 20 years is what yeah, great. Yeah. we don't do it. We've no. never done it. We've always no. struggled at, you know, particularly at home against these teams that want to rock up and make the pitch small. Uh, and hard to to, 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 to be. I, I I think away oh, from the home. Pro, the promotion season under Burnley. Rich. Do you remember when it pissed down with rain against Crew? They beat us two one. <laughs> they were down by, oh. on the top of the table. That no, that was a season we should have gone up, and we didn't go oh, up. Was it? Was that yeah, that Mark, Mark yeah. Rivers scored, didn't he? For them, and we were we were going for the top two, and that sort yeah. of blew our season apart. You know, we, yeah. we we rocked up that day expecting to roll them over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Look, at home, our home form as well. Let's let's speak about that. We're turning Portman Road very slowly into a fortress suddenly. Not lost at home, Paul McKenna. Yeah, Paul McKenna. Yeah, Kieran McKenna. Kieran McKenna. Needs a knee quitting Paul. I caught myself then. There you go. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> but it's it's now slowly, as Connor said, uh, Connor Chaplin said uh, uh, on Radio Suffolk, we're slowly turning it into a fortress, which is I important think, for the end of the season. I think the big issue maybe I've got over yesterday is that you know, I was listening to what Gary Neville was saying about Fergie, where like you you put in a really good performance and he'd come in and say, right, fantastic. That's now the standard. And we saw that standard that we want to see from the team at, at Gillingham in the 4-0 with the first half, the fluent passing, the tempo, the people getting back. It was absolutely brilliant. And then we played the same opposition yesterday. And it's like you're watching it back as if it was like Lambert 2.0, Cook 2.0. So that was the disappointing thing, I think, that they've, you know, there's a blueprint there that that, that team have hit previously, and like we were well off it yesterday. But um, look, it's 46 games in a season. You ain't going to play brilliantly for 46 games, as Rich rightly said earlier. You are you are going to have hiccups, I guess. But I, for, for me personally, it was a long way away in the performance from what we saw at Priestfield against the same team. It was. You're right. You're absolutely right. But. We're going to go again, as they say. Um, 
very quickly, we are sponsored, uh, partnered with Woodpecker Mortgages and Protection, the mortgage and protection experts. You can check them out. Matt, did you say you had two mortgages on Friday's show? Yeah, I do. One for the house, one for the extension, yeah. There you go. You want to be, you, what you want to be doing is going to Graham, who's a big town fan. If you're like Matt with two mortgages, yeah. uh, I am myself, we, 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 we could be paying more interest than we need to be on that second mortgage, Graham tells us, Matt. To be honest, Graham, I've nearly paid off the extension. Of course he has. Because he's old <laughs> mansion towers. But if you're like me and not like Matt, you may want to go and check out Graham at Woodpecker Mortgages and Protection. Uh, he yeah. could be able to save you some money on a remortgage or a new property. But of course, be aware that if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage, you, your home will be repossessed, as you probably would expect if you didn't pay for something. Um, no to be fair. That. No, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that at all. Uh, let's do some goats. That's Graham at Woodpecker Mortgages and Protection. Because uh, I've got a funny feeling we've probably got a lot to moan about. Knowing us oh. three. Oh, I like this brand still. Hang on. Interesting stat. Someone pointed out to me this morning we've only lost twice in the last 25 league games. Oh, I like that. Ooh, what were those defeats? That. Yeah. Who do we lose against, Dan? Let us know in the chat. Right. As always, we will put these three to the public vote. Cruncher has got two goats in the end of year finals already. Matt has yet to have one. Uh, Matt, what is your goat this week? Oxford United. <laughs> they are getting on my nerves. Getting on done? my wick. And it goes right back to 87. Remember, Rich, when they we beat them 3 2 at Portland Road and there was the pitch invasion, which meant Ian Atkins, to... Ian Atkins last minute. Well, it wasn't Ian Atkins. Actually, if you watch that, Matt, it's Kevin Wilson's goal. Wilson. He comes off his backside. Yeah, hit his hip, didn't it? But um, yeah, the go, my, my beef with them goes way back to then. And then they had to beat Arsenal, 3 0, stay up and, uh, and relegate us. And lo and be bloody hold, that's what they did. See, but, that never happened nowadays because that was a rearranged fixture and you never yeah, have that because you'd have the last take. games on the last day of the season. Yeah, piss take. And talking of piss takes, in the last two weeks, they've been taking the piss. <laughs> I mean, so spawning. Four penalties at Gillingham, which, which were all penalties, Matt told us yesterday. We haven't had four penalties in the last two seasons, let alone in 90 minutes. And then they get lucky again yesterday with Portsmouth down to 10 men for 75 minutes. And then they mm -hmm. score a 96-minute goal and kill our vibe coming out of the game. So they're getting on my wig, Oxford. And not to mention, forget to mention, they've only got three bloody sides to their stadium. What kind of stadium has three sides? Oh, yeah, you oh, see, another team. Another team that fucking gets on my Get out of the way. Get out of the bleeding way. Go back to the manor ground and let us get into the playoffs. Let us know what your goat is for the week. What has got you feeling the way Matt Phillips is clearly feeling about <laughs> Oxford? Stick to boat races, Oxford. Yeah. Right. Made the yeah. playoffs to the last two seasons, looking like they're going to make the playoffs in the third season. And then when they got to the playoffs last year, they walked three down at halftime. That's well, Matt, it looks like we're in the league this for the third season and we're not going to fucking make them one time. So oh, no, there you no. go. Don't start me. That's a stat that blows my mind. Matt Dunham says, yes, Matt. Uh, to be fair, Oxford. it's Carl Robinson still there, isn't it? In charge yeah. of Oxford. I'd, yeah. I'd love him. Yeah, I quite like him. Yeah. <laughs> He's a great guy. Family guy. Was he on like BBC Focus when he was at... Uh, was it Where was he at before MK Dons? Remind me. Uh, Oxford, sorry. MK Dons is where he was. Charlton. And Charlton, Charlton. Yeah, we're, yeah, great family guy. Um, Chaser says, two 20-yard screamers. Brannigan got an absolute screamer. And then um, who's the guy yeah. who scored the winner? 96 minutes. Holland. Nathan that Holland. was it. Two scored five goals in two games. I mean, it's a piss take, honestly. Piss take, uh, Oxford. Piss take Oxford. There you go. That's the new name for him. Piss take Oxford. Rich, what is your goat? Right. So we might have all seen uh, this week, Valimir Ishmir was given the boot. Yes. <laughs> Steve Bruce. Yeah. At fucking West Brom. <laughs> so they didn't like your his mate's style not of football. Easy, West Brom fans didn't like Vlav Ball, it was called. Yeah, so your, your friend Chris would probably back this up. Not very impressed. He's gone there from Barnsley. He's very really well Barnsley he? Who are struggling <laughs> bottom of the league. Yeah. Didn't like his football. Who have they brought in? 58-year-old Steve Bruce. <laughs> now, this is where I get the arse ache with recycling of the same fucking managers, Roy yeah. Hodgson. Roy <laughs> Hodgson yesterday, if you haven't all seen it, a great interview after the game, Matt. Have you seen it? When the wind is absolutely howling and his fucking hair is going everywhere. It's absolutely hilarious. His eyes are streaming. Brilliant. He's 73. He should be drawing his fucking pension. 
Oh, I think he's 74 now, you know. I think yeah. he's the oldest manager in but the Premier West League. Brom, I'll go through West Brom. Roy Hodgson. Tony Pulis. <laughs> Sam Allardyce. <laughs> Steve Bruce. There's a bit of a theme here, isn't there, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. McCarthy. <laughs> and, I, and I know Steve Bruce has got four promotions, right? He's got four promotions, which fair mm. play. But they were saying the fans didn't like the style of football of the previous manager. When he was at Newcastle, when he They'll was at Villa, their fans... Didn't like his style of football. So <laughs> yeah. how is it going to be any different for West Brom? Exactly. That Recycling our managers, yeah. get in I the totally, bin. I totally agree. Old Flair and Ishmael did a great job at Barnsley. They gave us a bit of shit. Do you remember over that Luke Thomas loan? We were going, we shouldn't have players loaned from Barnsley to Ipswich. So I'm quite happy there, bottom of the table. But yeah, absolutely. He needed more time than that. And he, he signed the, um, what's the guy, uh, Daryl, D- that DK he signed at West DK. Brom? Good player. He, he, he had him at Barnsley, he signed yeah. him, and then he got injured. He's injured. So, um, yeah. DK's yeah. a good player. Mm. We yeah. should look to get him on loan. <laughs> He's a funny one, though, isn't it? You know, going from, well, just going to Steve Bruce full stop is a funny yeah. one. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah, I totally, yeah, I totally agree. This, uh, ben King, man used to say ben this. King, you've got to get in the bin yet, Cruncher, after Norwood was on fire. I'm what I'm waiting, Ben. When is your interview with James Norwood? Is that part two? Uh, Ben's no, a joke. Ben's Ben's <laughs> Ben's a good guy. He's one of he's, he's part of the community. Good old Ben. I agree. I ben. agree with what which you say. My old man used to say that. Go, you see the same old people getting the same old jobs, and he used to cite all those people being yeah. curious and all, all that lot. Yeah. Uh, Crystal Palace is also a common theme that they've all managed that, isn't it? I tell you something else that's <laughs> like that. TV dramas. Same old. <laughs> Same old actors and actresses getting the same old fucking jobs. It's like what have you been watching what? then? What have you been watching? Um, what are you going? Responder is what we're watching at the moment. I think on BBC. Oh, right. That's all right, actually. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. I like old Martin Freeman. I think he's a great actor. Uh, I watched a bit of Teachers this morning. For it was on the on in the background with Sheridan <laughs> Smith or Teacher. I think oh, the, whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, not for me. Getting the bin. That's rubbish. Uh. But I haven't really got time for TV these days, Matt. I'm not like you. I'm a busy man. Busy, you busy, busy, the, busy. You need to get on the Cobra Kai is what you need to be doing. No, I'm all sure. right. Uh, what is my goat this week? I My goat this week is the cancellation of bloody neighbours. What's see going that. on? I know. What is going on? Surely the BBC, because Channel 5 are going to get rid of it, right? Yeah. Put more money into a UK drama. Michael Cruz is great and small. Big show. But na- BBC needs to get back on the neighbours train for me. It's got to be better than doctors yes. and, all, and people buying antiques. Absolutely. Well, it used to be on twice, didn't it? Do you remember when it was on twice? It was on at 1.30, yeah. and if you missed it, you catch it again at 5.30 in the evening when you're having after your tea. Yeah, after Late Blue time. Peter, Neighbours. I love Neighbours. Absolutely loved it. Me and my, me and my late days to watch it. That's I was home t- tutored at secondary Lester's school. What's hotel complex? Paul Robinson, still going. Paul Robinson, Toadfish. Love Toad. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mangle. Do you remember Mrs. Mangle? Mangle, Joe Mangle. Yeah, yeah. We was always we were saying on Marvel FA WhatsApp today, all the old colleagues of what we were saying. Do you remember when it was eighteen months behind in the UK? You couldn't yes. do that now, could you? Because you'd see the spoilers on social. There's Helen Daphne Daniels, <laughs> and then you've got the the dog. The dog had a whole episode to itself when he had a dream. Bouncer. 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 Yes. Yeah. I mean, like, come on, this is great quality TV. We must save it. Um, yeah, plus I love my soap, so that's that's your three goats, they are now in the community. Please do vote. Channel 5, do not see, and oh, and they're bringing that back, they're bringing the East Enders omnibus back. I've got some great news for you. And apparently, Corey's gonna go to an hour Monday, hour Wednesday, three Friday. times a week. Yeah, I can't keep up with it now, as it is. East Enders, get rid of East Enders. Nah, I love a bit of that slots. Bring neighbors into that slots. You what? You what, you slag? <laughs> you ain't my mother. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. Great stuff. Um, absolutely you love it. Don't get this on any other Ipswich podcast. Oh, no, no, you no. certainly don't. Terry's Fun got a... and entertainment all the while. Oh, bam, bam, bam. So Terry's got a goat. Minor goat. Well, don't do minor goats, Terry. They're a goats or they're not. Stupid post on TWTD. Well, you could just send the sentence there. Ladies and gentlemen, taking a Jimmy Carr joke out of context. Uh, jokes are jokes. They you, you either like Frankie Boyle. I, I'm not a big fan of his. His comedy's too I much. Am. Pushing the end, but I thought you would be. You strike me as, as his sort of. Did you see Frankie? In London. Look at the EastEnders. Did you see Doctor Leg died? Was it last week? Yeah, yeah. Poor Doctor Leg. I thought, actually thought, all respect to Doctor Leg. I thought he'd already gone. He was in his nineties, wasn't he? Shout Bring out back Dream Team. What a show that was. Yes, oh. that was a great show. <laughs> but to be fair, you know, like any comedian that's got a show called Rehypnal Nights. 
Lee Brown's on one. Look, neighbours, Bolton, fish cakes, cob old stand. Oh, all in the he, bin. You know, Lee's a funny boy because when you see him, he's all lovely to your face. When he gets behind that keyboard, look, he gets a bit brave, <laughs> doesn't he? Get bitty big, bitty big bollocks. Oh, yeah. Suddenly knocking down cobble stands. Lee, <laughs> you see me every week. Let's step into my office and talk. Uh, no, I'm joking. No, I love you very dearly, really. I love you dearly. Please don't beat me up. <laughs> no, I haven't. Um, my, my goat from Matt is the coffee in the portman. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I went for a tea yesterday. It's just something not quite right with it. I can't work it out. Lee says cell block H cell block H was shit. The set kept moving. Uh, bad girls, remember that on ITV? That was a yeah. that was a good show. You know, well Shirley out of EastEnders, isn't it? Oh, yeah. As, uh, Yvonne Atkins, top dog. She got she got killed, didn't she? By Fenner. That was a great show. Oh, I do. I used to watch. You don't have crap. time for TV. <laughs> I was like fourteen. That was one of the greatest <laughs> wives. Oh, Tanya. <laughs> right. Uh, back to the football. Yeah. Doncaster, MK. Six points from six. Do you think? Well, no, well, I think I, I said Friday night when we were doing our games, didn't we? I said we'd win at Donny, and I would imagine we'd probably lose at MK. But who knows? Who knows now? I don't. I really don't know. I really didn't see Doncaster going to Sunderland. You thought you'd, even though they're managerless, managerless, you'd have seen a you keep reaction us. as professionals. You'd have seen a reaction after losing six 0 to Bolton, but no, they lose two one to um to Doncaster. So maybe it's going to be a tougher game than what we envisaged, you know, because we did. <laughs> We, I did call it a championship performance when we beat uh, Donning 6 0 um, at Portman Road. So we'll wait and see. Sounds like it's going to be a difficult game. Sounds like it's going to be difficult. Absolutely. Is that all it is? £2.50? That's probably why it's shit. Um, even, yeah, no, no, no. Rich, um, uh, let's just, hang on, I had something I was not asking enough, completely forgotten what it was. Oh, yeah, the injured player. Obviously, that was a moment in the game where, for once, Portman Road got a little bit, a little bit testy. Didn't it? Um, basically screaming at the team to carry on. Fuck the player yeah. that's on the floor. Right, I, I was around. actually one of them. Yeah, I was. I was shouting, fuck him. Just fuck Head him. Injury, <laughs> different story. Someone holding their leg. But then it we was booed. Quite a serious injury, though, in the end. Well, it was quite a serious injury. Then we booed the cart coming on as well. Yeah. Or we, we made, you that. know, chants about the cart coming. Like, we were quite fierce for once as a, as a stadium. I liked it. Look, well, let's not go too heavy on that because the atmosphere in the first half was shocking. Oh, yeah. If you're in the North Stand, we've said this before, if you're in the North Stand, sing from minute one. Don't just go in the North Stand because you want to be in the North Stand. There's a role to be played there. If you don't want to sing, come and sit with me. <laughs> and watch from the sidelines and moan. But if you, the family was really flat and that didn't, con that contributed to the dismal performance. Yeah, it had one of them end of season feels, Matt, that first half. Yeah, it's what I said earlier, wasn't it? It's a team trying to escape relegation against a team that had given up on the playoffs in the first no. half. No. It was a team that's getting relegation against the team with fans that expected to roll them over. And we weren't three them up inside 30 minutes. Yeah, so the fans were starting yeah. to get a bit, oh, here we go again, syndrome. That's what it was, Rich. They expected to see fireworks from the moment they sat so down in their office. Are we going there with so we got so we one of the worst human traits is entitlement. So are we entering the stadium with entitlement? Is that we have it seems like Gillingham. Yeah. I, I think so. Because look, you saw it Friday, you saw it before the game. Lot no one really had Gillingham. No, I had three now. I had one if scored early If we'd scored early or Piggott scored that header, maybe it would have been 3 0. Equally, they hit the post twice. Could have been 2 0. <laughs> so, you know. It was always good. Look, it was always going to be a, a more difficult game than it was up there because that was one of the uh, the most inept teams, Matt, that I've seen us play against in many years up there, especially that first half. They were absolutely shocking. Mm. And Harris, Harris will do a good job there. I said to Matt on um, Thursday when I spoke to him. They just need something. When they're probably going to go down, but you need to see something to take down with you. He and probably, if they play like that for the rest of the season, yeah, next season you'll probably be positive if you're a Gillingham fan, you know, because yeah. they they put up a good fight, they were organised, and um, but us, are we? In, is it entitlement? Yes, probably. We probably thought we've rolled them over four 0 away from home. Why can't we do the same here? But like you said earlier, Matt, no two games in football against the same opposition they're ever the same. But then you get, exactly, but then you get, talking of entitlement, when you see we're spending six mil more than the, up, the next best wage bill, oh, oh Martin's gone, out of protest, yeah. that when, you, when you're doing nine mil on wages, Rich, and the, the average in the division is free, that builds up entitlement as well, doesn't it, I think? Yeah, we've got, we've got a guy who 
he's on 21k. He was on the bench yesterday. What? Yeah. So there's one for the comments. Why didn't Sel Look, everyone keeps telling me I was wrong saying Selena should go back? Yeah, he's earned his 20 grand this week. Not even kicked a ball. It just seems a funny business deal that to me. And you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, he'll, play, he'll play Tuesday. I hope so. I don't I think Norwood will play. I'd be surprised if Norwood started on Tuesday after. Sort we of need Selena to step. I mean, it's all very well seen as scoring worldies against Crew, who are in the bottom four. But we need to him to step up. Certainly, if he gets a, a game at MK Dons, I want to see him bossing that game. Hmm. Yeah, I, well, yeah, possibly. Is that, I think is that too much to expect yeah. from our highest earner in League One? You know, you. I mean, Ashton must be putting his air out a little bit. It's probably a big wedge for Selena to come in, and, and and as I've said before, I'm sure he was the X factor to get us top two. And now we're stuck paying him. We've probably paid a loan fee to D Dijon. That's why he hasn't gone back. And he's stuck paying astronomical wages for the division with a team that's eight, nine points. When, when, you, look at, when you look at overall, so we've got Bon on, what is he, 12, 13 goals, Gov? You've uh, now yeah, got Colin similar. Chaplin. Colin Chaplin's got, um, I think, seven in the league. Burns has got eight in the league. We've yeah. had some outstanding individual performances, but... Yeah, it's the yeah. collective and putting it together as a team, and we don't do it often enough. That's why we are where we are. I'm quite happy for people to tell me yeah. I'm wrong about Selena. I'm quite happy, but you know, you stick your own pocket in and give him twenty grand a week and see how happy you are with his contribution across the season. Ain't our money, is it? I'm sure Ashton, being a money man, is probably quite pissed off by that. I would have thought. Absolutely, yeah. I'm with AD there. That's my goat next week. I think that's my goat next week. Fucking hate that. I, we had a big discussion about this. Yeah, this is this started through the lockdown games, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's a piss take for, to me because you oh, can get. Like, we, I think we've mentioned it previously, haven't we? It's another piss take. Be pissed off this week. <laughs> yeah, we're going over for coaching. Shouldn't yeah, be allowed. shouldn't be. Allowed. No, it shouldn't be allowed. You're right, and that's why you get situations that you get in the second half when fans don't know if the player is being genuinely injured or if he's just gone down because they're not playing great or the team's on, on top and they want to get further instruction. Yeah. Uh, but it used to be you left the field of play. You couldn't come on until the referee brought you back. I mean, it should yeah. be the case now. Uh, yeah. Neil Perks, Selena's a luxury player. And still, Selena won good game in four. Colin Plum, Aluko not in the 18. Yeah, I didn't think we missed Aluko at all. I don't know what was... Was happening with Aluka? Has yeah. anybody seen? Has anybody seen the Rotherham fan on the fan on the pitch kicking the ball yeah. off the penalty spot? That's, and then and then uh, having a bit of Harry Poe as well. Yeah, yeah. Shocking. Look, really. Well, I mean, look, get over it. Hang on. Just, right, right, rewind, it. rewind. You endorsed when we had a young fan run on the pitch at Portman Road. Yeah, and I said to you, context it's Richard. unacceptable for context, anybody. Okay? Context. 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 Doesn't matter if it's a 13, a young fan running on adult. after a goal to high five Danassian is a bit different to some it is different, early twenties fella running on kicking a ball and then having a bit of an opposition player. Context. I, no, yeah, I get I that, but nobody yeah. should be running on the pitch, Martin. It well, doesn't Stuart, matter if you're fourteen Stuart's or you're twenty-four or you're forty-four. Stewart's fault. Do you know the stewards? At, um, third game Wimbledon. running. Third game running. By the way, at Rotherham, they've had people on the pitch, and yes. it's not just well, there. Look at the football league yesterday. There was the incident at Morecambe v Bolton. There was an incident at Colchester. The, at the Orient game, a Colchester player was abused. Yeah, it's getting there's incidents popping up. It's not isolated anymore. I don't think it's shame. Some people have been on Twitter. It's shameful. Even really, a geezer's run on the pitch and kicked the football. Now, if he'd, if, if he'd gone up and punched somebody, which we've also seen, what was it? Grealish got floored in the, in he the did. Birmingham derby. He did, though, Matt, because after they kicked the ball away, I, I, there's a bit where he, he had oh, yeah, a bit of a shove. A lot of people shove, yeah. would say Harry Pell actually deserves one because he is a shit out. But I'm not endorsing <laughs> anybody. <laughs> I'm not endorsing anyone running on the pitch. Just a oh, bit. Right. If, he's, if he's made contact with a player, that's bad. John yeah. Coleman was a little bit over the top by saying, Abandoned. I thought the game was going to be abandoned. Have a word with yourself. No, he's not right. Right. Well, they lost the game, didn't they? So, and he missed the penalty, didn't he? He did. Oh, if he's put hands on a player, that, I don't agree with that. Kicking the no, ball off the spot, get over it. But, and then we yeah, had a tweet I saw yesterday about some uh, chanting uh, in regards to our own fans yesterday as well. I don't know the ins and outs of They're all of, about of... the Delia song. They're on about the Delia song. Ah, we're, I've spoken with that with Amy. I, I think you can have the Delia song, but you, you know, I mean, I've been guilty in my early life of, of adding the bit at the end as well but the more mature you get I think the more you think actually that's, that's, I don't think that's appropriate mm. do you feel it's, oh. it's, it's, it's the bit at the end right she's a that's the bit 
Yeah, but I think it, we're it's just a snowflake it. society now. We're not going to be able to do anything, to say anything. Mm. You know, does that offend when I see some Ipswich? I see some women on Twitter who follow town. They said they're not offended by it at all. It's, there's always somebody, though, that's offended by everything. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But is, the, is it is it a needed part of the song? Like, can you get... Diddy's is an asshole. that's fine. But do you need the bit at the end where it, we all chant, she's a... You know, mm. is that needed? Is that is that a needed part of the um, song? Well, it's tribal mentality, isn't it? Because you wouldn't just sing it individually in the street, would you? Or we'll sing it at home no. watching TV on TV. <laughs> I, mean, I mean? might be guilty of that as well. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it's people, it's people getting just carried away in the tribal moment, isn't it? Go, yeah. Going back quickly to the stewards thing, at Wembley, the, the fastest runners of the stewards at Wembley would wear football boots. So if someone yeah. did get on, <laughs> they would launch themselves on there. But if players, if fans are getting on the pitch, that's a club issue and a stewarding issue. You've got yeah. enough stewards at these stadiums to be able to, to stop that, in my opinion. Uh, Roy Clark, my goat is the kickoff. We pass the ball back and it's hoofed up to the defence and we lose the ball nine times out of ten. That's every team, though, isn't it? You know, that's every <laughs> yeah. team. Right. Yeah. Tonight, nine o'clock, Craig Forrest. If you're a YouTube member or a co fi monthly supporter, get your question in. We'll ask it live on the show. I've got. I've look, look at this list of questions. I've got a list here. And on the back. Back. We don't want his questions. We want wow. your questions at home. Wow. Uh, but we're done for today. We're back tomorrow as well, 8 30, where we'll, we'll have a live link for you to get involved. Obviously, appreciate you understand today wouldn't have been a, a great time because obviously we're trying to keep it condensed as we possibly could. Uh, but we're back tomorrow, 8 30, with Alex and George, Alex Wilson and George Nunn. Nunn is on again, three out of again. four Mondays. Yeah, press Nunn's like on. if you like the show. He's George on Monday. Monday again. George, Mon yeah, Mr. Monday night is old George. Yeah. Uh, he loves a bit of the Monday. Press but yes, like, press like, George of like, the Nun and Alex of the Wilson are joining me. Brilliant. Live link, get involved. But see you tonight, nine o'clock. Where, you, where are you off to, Matt? Where are you going for lunch? Uh, the pub up the road. The missus Ooh. wants a roast, so we're off to, that, to have that. See what's available. I might go turkey. Although I might go ham egg and chips. They do very good ham egg and chips in that pub. Oh, oh, nice. man, man, that's cool. Well, ham egg and chips. You get that at oh, home? Yeah. Uh, no, I rarely get that at home. Really, really. Oh, look, 149 from Neil. Shout out, Neil. Oh, Neil, great, great last minute saver there. Thank you very much. We appreciate that with your super sticker. Cruncher, put the old one I sent you on what stewards and police there. Yeah, Pathetic. That's a great. He, uh, Lee Bailey sent me a great clip. I'll put it on my Twitter from Oldham fans away at Scunthorpe yesterday. Great win to, for Oldham. 1 0. Yeah. On the Latics. Right. We'll see you tonight at 9 p.m. Right. Lovely, yeah. Hello, you lovely lot. I am here very quickly to discuss Woodpecker Mortgages and Protection, run by Ipswich Town fan Graham. So you know you're in good hands if you go with Woodpecker Mortgages and Protection. I want to discuss the income protection service they do with you. You all know me and you all know my story. Literally, one day I went out into that big wide world, a scary world, and I had an injury which left me disabled and unable to work. Just like that, I lost my income. Just like that. That's a click there. Crazy. This may have been an answer to a prayer because obviously when you can't work, you can't earn. And when you can't earn, your bills are still going to be there wanting to be paid like children needing to be fed. This could have been an answer to my prayer and taken some stress away from me and let me focus on my mental and physical health. Income protection insurance. It's not for everybody, but it might be for you. So give Graham a call on 01636 337 447 or email graham at woodpeckermortgages.co.uk. And I must say, your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage.